Hey everyone, this is Aaron, um, and uh, I just wanted to talk about the subject of time. It's quite a very important subject to understand the flat Earth. I was starting to look into tides and whether they could be explained by the model I created, and I started to see all these very strange um, timings, uh, very strange shifting timings, and so on, in tide data that I was looking at. So I got hold of this, uh, this government this Australian government document with tide tables and tide times. I was looking through this and then I, I realised that there's no point trying to understand time uh, of tides before you've understood sunrise, sunset, moonrise and moonset. Because, you know, those times, sunrise, sunset, moonrise and moonset, are actually quite complicated. And you, if you start looking around for data on them, you'll find inconsistent data in all sorts of places, wrong data. It's actually quite strange how hard it is to find out about what's going on with sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset times. But in this um, in this document, I found. Hang on, I'm going to show it to you. Right. So this is um, this is sunrise and sunset for Queensland. So if we look at Brisbane, you see that in December is the earliest sunrise, which is at 4.44 in the morning. And the latest sunrise is in July, which is 6.38 in the morning. So it's an, an hour and nearly an hour and 50 minutes difference. So you've got an oscillate, and if you look through the year, you'll see it's oscillating between these two valleys. And if you were to think about it, it's kind of oscillating around a sort of average time, which happens at the, sol at the solstices, sorry, at the equinoxes. So what you have is the earliest um, sunrise is happening at the winter solstice. The latest sunrise is happening at the summer solstice. And then at the um, equinoxes in between, you're at an in-between time. Okay. So there's this oscillation going on in the sunrise times. And the same thing goes on with the sunset times. They're oscillating. And they're oscillating uh, on a, in an annual way, of course. And as I said, their, their maximum amplitude uh, distance from the average in the summer solstice, the winter solstice. Okay, so if you look at this model, I'm going to show you... Um, why they shift around. Okay, so this is something no other model seems to be able to explain. So, first of all, I'm going to say that the, the day lengths are a very important um, issue. It's very hard to get good day length data. But if you look, actually, the, the, the day length in New York in the middle of the winter and the day length in Cusco, Peru, so they're on roughly similar longitudes. And we're told by science that it's all about the longitude because it's a spinning sphere. But if you look at these two, in the winter, New York's having a nine hour long day, while Cusco is having a 13 hour long day on the same day. So, what's going on there? This, you have to understand that the sphere is in, completely hopeless at, at explaining any of these day length phenomena. But anyway, let's forget about all the sphere. I'm, I'm more interested in the flat Earth, um, and there's no flat Earth model that can explain the movement of the moon times and sun times correctly either, or the day lengths. Now, I've already shown in another video that this can explain the day lengths in the south and north correctly. Um, so I've, you can look at that if you want to see stuff about the day lengths. But what I want to show here is why you have this time distortion. Okay, so there's two kinds of time. You need to understand there's two there's two time systems. There's there's clock time, which is imagine a clock hand going out from the North Pole. It just goes round. You're familiar. Your watch, your clock, all the the, the time pieces, timekeeping instruments you look at show clock time. Okay, it's you know midday, midnight, 24 hours, and it's circling around here. Okay. Now there is a different time, different system of time called geometric time or solar time you could call it which is all about which is which is about the geometry of the situation 
So the time you experience is geometric time, because what you experience is that the sky is either light or it's dark, and the sun is in a particular place, the moon's in a particular place. So your experience of the time is driven by that, that which is actually geometry. And the geometry of the situation um, does not line up with uh, the clock time of the situation. And the reason they don't line up is because the system is the sun and moon are spinning about a system that is a uh, point that is not at the North Pole. There is a distance between the North Pole and the centre point. And you've got to observe that point. So if you watch that as it circles around that, this is in the winter solstice when this is at its maximum amplitude. So the diff the distance between the North Pole and the centre point of the sun and moon, this red dot, oscillates during the year. At the solstices, at winter solstice it's at this maximum because the the sun is on the south tropic and the moon is on the north tropic. Whereas if you go to the other solstice, to June, the summer solstice, now you've got the sun on the north tropic and the moon on the south tropic. Either way, the centre point is shifted away from the north pole by 24 degrees. So it's now going around a circle defined by 24 degrees. Okay, And if I go to the equinoxes, that disappears because at the equinoxes, this is oscillated back to this, this system is oscillated back to the centre. And so the centre point of the sun and moon coincide with the North Pole, which is why everyone gets a 12 hour day wherever they are in the world on the equinox. Okay, so that's explained by this. It's all very simple on the equinoxes 12 hour days wherever you are. No time distortion. If you look down here, there's a time distortion angle, and here it's showing a very small number, one minute. If I change that back from the equinox to the solstice, you'll see that jumps up to one and a half hours at the point I've marked, which is, okay, let's say, somewhere around London. I can go very high, four hours. Okay, so there can be hours of time distortion. So what is this time distortion that I'm talking about? The easiest way for you to understand is if I show you what happens as I run the model. So take a guy standing here in northwest Africa. Okay. He's just had okay, he's just had sunset. And now he's had the moon over there, so solar midnight. And now he's just hit midnight, which is the middle, the ang the angular middle of the sunset to sunrise. Now he's hit sunrise. Okay. Now what I want you to see is, first of all, he's, um, he's having slightly longer nights than days. Okay. So the reason these aren't equal is because of this motion. The motion here is not circling around the centre. This whole line is circling around the centre, but the centre point of the Sun and Moon is not over the North Pole. So what we need to watch is, as sunrise comes round, so I'm standing here, it's about to hit sunrise. Look at where the red dot is. Now, it was there. Okay? So the red dot was there when it was sunrise. But when it comes to sunset, watch where the red dot is. So at sunset, the red dot has moved all the way around to here. It was here, it was here. Now if you imagine a, a, a triangle between those two points and me, where the red dot was and me. Imagine the triangle from here to here. Okay. So this is about to hit me again. Boom. There's the there's the point. Sunrise and over here will be sunset. In fact, I'll pause it when it gets to sunset so you can see. Okay, so sunset, the dots here. There was sunrise, the dot was here. Imagine a triangle between that dot me and this dot. Okay? And then imagine there's an angle here in that triangle. Now that angle here represents a time distortion. So my, sent, my clock time is distorted with respect to the geometric time of what I see, which is driven by this point. And the distortion is given by that angle over the whole of the last 12 hours. Uh, 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 so over the period between sunrise and sunset, that much distortion in terms of angle 
was introduced into my time system. So that much difference came about between geometric time and angular time and, and, and clock time. So that angle can be calculated and, can, and, it's part, and it's part of a circle. So you can calculate how many hours of dis time distortion that creates. So this is what I've got down here, is time distortion calculation. So this time distortion, as you can see, can be a number of hours. And this explains why it is that we perceive the sun and moon to have different rise and set times and why we have solar noon and, so, and, and solar midnight, which is where the moon's directly overhead, at seemingly different clock times. They're different clock times, but they're not different geometric times. It's just that the clock and geometric times have come apart because of this time distortion, and they come apart the most at the solstices, and they align and become, and they coincide with the equinoxes. So at the equinoxes, geometric time and clock time momentarily become the same and then they come apart and then the same.